Alex here with another product review. This time we're taking a look at the Taddy Brothers V3 clip-on backup camera system, which is also a dash cam. Now this is the first time I see a backup system V combined with a dash cam, but also because it's a wireless backup system, this is all there is as far as the rear camera. No need to route a cable all the way to the front of the vehicle. The system supports night vision as well as parking assistance. And on this video, I'm gonna show you the contents of the kit as well as the features of it. That way you can decide if it's the right kit for you. As always, I'd like to remind you that I placed a link in the description down below to the system in case you wanna get one for yourself. Included in the kit is a clip-on mirror, wireless rear camera, and to power the mirror, they have included this automotive adapter. However, they have also included this plug in case you want that to be hardwired. To power the rear camera, they have included this plug, which again will be hardwired to the vehicle. Now let's look at mounting, and as you can see, there are some spring-loaded clips on the bottom of this clip-on mirror. <laughs> That's why it's called a clip-on mirror. So I'm gonna go ahead and center that on my OEM mirror. I'm gonna pull on those two little spring-loaded clips and that is it. Mounting is complete. Memory bay is located on the left-hand side of the monitor and it supports a maximum of 128 gigabytes of memory. And what's pretty interesting is the size of this unit is about 10 inches and this is great because it allows quite a bit of clearance for the visors to come down on both sides and most mirrors that we see that are digital mirrors are longer sometimes that can conflict with the visors and here I they managed to reduce that length instead of going longer they went a little bit taller giving us this size and there is pretty much no startup image what happens when this thing gets power it looks for signal from the rear camera if there is a signal it displays that image and here we go I've seen a live view from the rear of the vehicle now for some reason I wanted to attempt to use this as a normal mirror I could tap this button and you can see that it is somewhat reflective tapping this button again turns the screen on but I do want to show you what it looks like when you begin to back up with this unit And this is what the system looks like at night. It does feature night vision. So what you're seeing here are the infrared lights coming from the back of camera. I'm gonna put the car on reverse and there's gonna be additional lights that are coming from my vehicle. And in combination with the night vision, this is what it looks like when you back up at night. And I'm gonna go forward so you can see what it looks like with just the night vision from the camera system. The other test I like to do with backup systems is compare the quality of the video to the video coming from my stock OEM camera. That way I can tell if the video is worse, is it better, or is it about the same? And some a couple interesting things you'll notice. Notice in here how the image is much brighter over here, much brighter over there. And over here, you can see how dark it is on those places. Now, I attribute that to the night vision capability of the system that this is brighter. Also, notice on the stock camera, there is some noise. You can see all that. There's a lot of movement going on here. And you don't see noise like that on this system. So I'm going to say it's probably about the same level of uh, quality as the OEM camera and maybe a little bit better in terms of light sensitivity due to that night vision capability. And in addition to that power button, we also have these arrows and these arrows allow us to adjust the brightness of the screen. And here I'm gonna bring that down if needed or increase it if I wanted to run it at its maximum brightness. Now this does support automatic brightness adjustment, but if you wanted to control that manually, you could. And the system does support reverse guidelines, which I have enabled to show them to you. And let's take a look at what that looks like as I'm backing up. And some people prefer to have guidelines on, some people don't use guidelines. Unfortunately, the guidelines are not adjustable digitally. 
the only way to adjust these guidelines and any kind of system that doesn't have adjustable guidelines digitally is by adjusting the rear camera. If I move that camera and aim it either up and down, I can adjust these guidelines in the vertical axis. Now let's get into the fun stuff and that is access with the menu. The very first option is to pair more cameras and that is because this system supports a total of four channels. So we could potentially display four cameras on this system. The next option is gonna be the adjustment of picture and this allows us to change things like the brightness if you wanted to really bump that up or lower that. I find the sweet spot on mine around number six and also the same thing with the contrast. You're able to adjust that up and down. And once again, here in my preference will be for about number six. And there's other adjustments such as hue, which will change the color of blue or red, but more interestingly, the volume. Now, why is there a volume adjustment? Well, that is because there is a microphone on the rear camera and we can potentially get audio from this unit. Let me show you how that sounds. And the next option is going to be the adjustment of the rear camera where we have four potential choices and each one what it does it changes either vertically or horizontally or a combination of both now depending on how the rear camera is mounted i can potentially select from one of these four settings to make sure that it is displayed correctly in my particular case i have it on the third setting and that displays the image correctly for me and the next option is going to be mode and again here's where you will control how you want the cameras to be displayed if you happen to be running multiple cameras and the next one cam setup is also for adjusting the system in case i was running multiple cameras and i wanted to control them including whether i want to enable auto scan let's also take a look at playing back videos i'm gonna go inside of the playback mode and i'm going inside of that folder and as you can see the files are in here and i'm looking at the time and the date and based on that i know i was driving somewhere around here let's try this one right here there we go it's kind of nice that they've given us this aspect ratio uh, where instead of having a screen that's long this way, this one's more square so we get to see a little bit more of the full video if not the actual full video. And if we wanted to see it on an even larger screen, we could potentially download this video to our computer. Next up is the record options. And in here we can select whether we want loop recording to be enabled or disabled. And that basically allows this to work like all dash cams where the, all this video begins to be overwritten when the memory card gets full. That way you always have fresh video and also the option to format that memory card, which again is supported up to 120 gigabytes, and also the recording time. If we want that to be in one minute increments, three minute increments, or five minute increments. So let's take a look at the advanced settings, and I'm gonna go inside of here, and here's where we can adjust the date and time, but also the languages. And there are several languages built in onto this unit in case you wanted to change it, from the default one. Here's also where you can enable auto dim. And that is basically gonna allow the screen to adjust the brightness based on if it's day or night. Here's also where you can enable or disable those parking reverse guidelines. And it's really gonna come down to a matter of preference, whether you, do you decide to use them or not use them. Now the last thing I wanna show you is this B1 button that allows me to switch between the different cameras that may be paired to this unit. Again, it supports up to a maximum of four different cameras paired at the same time. And I could potentially display all four at the same time, or I can display each one, one at a time. And I wanted to give you a better, closer look at what it looks like if you choose to run this with the LCD panel off and the reflectiveness of it. And here's what the camera looks like when it's mounted on the vehicle. It mounts behind the license plate area and it's mounted right now on the rear of the vehicle, but I could technically also mount it in the front as well. And also notice I could mount it on the bottom or I could mount it on the top. This particular car does not have space in the top for me to mount this on the top. So therefore that's why I mounted it here in the bottom. And also notice that there are adjustment screws. There's two on one side and two on the other. And this allows us to adjust the camera 
camera angle. Once that position is found, then I can turn those screws to lock that in place. And finally, I'll point out these little LEDs, this ring of LEDs. This is what provides that night vision capability. Now, while this is primarily a backup system, since it also has dash cam recording capabilities, let's take a look at the driving video to see how that particular feature performs. I have reviewed many backup camera systems, and usually the most common question I get is, does it record? And the answer has always been no. If you want recording capabilities, I recommend a dash cam. But that is a different product that may not work like a dedicated backup camera does. So I found it very interesting that this backup system records. It just seems to make sense. We got a camera, we got a monitor, let's add loop recording like a dash cam. The resolution comes in at 1024 by 608, which is a result of the clip-on mirror monitor aspect ratio. So we get this square image. Now a dedicated dash cam will exceed the picture quality of the V3 system, but again, backup systems do not normally record, so it is good to see them moving in this direction. But what really surprised me was the microphone on the rear camera. It doesn't sound amazing, but again, normally backup cameras do not feature a microphone or sound recording where this one does have it. So it is very possible we'll see improvements in video and audio quality on these wireless backup systems as they continue to evolve and potentially at one point in the future, they may even begin to overlap the capabilities of a dedicated dashcam system. But going back to the rear camera, you may have noticed that there is a plunger on it and that really is just a switch and that allows for or enables the pairing functionality, especially if you were gonna add more cameras. Now this particular system came already paired when I received it, so I didn't have to go through the pairing procedure, but in case yours does not come paired, that's what this little button does for. Now, if you're curious about how I pull power from the vehicle to power this camera, I have already made a video showing how that is done. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below along with a link to the V3 wireless backup camera system, which is also a dash cam in case you wanna get one for yourself. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this system, please put that in the comments down below. And if you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more mirror dash cams and backup camera reviews coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.